What's up comic and pop culture fans? This is James with Mint Hunter Comics hitting you with a top 10 racist moments in comic book history. And as your research will find, there's way more than just 10, but I'm choosing to focus on 10 absolutely insane what were they thinking moments that will leave you doing an extreme facepalm. There's no way I caught them all, so what are some not mentioned in this video? Bonus points if you can find a very recent example. Don't forget to like and subscribe or consider joining. It's the cost of coffee a month and it lets me do videos like this as a full-time job. Let's start with the classic, one of the best known ones that's going to be on this list. We got to talk about Lois turning black for a 24-hour time period. This one, unlike some of the other ones on this list, did not come from an extremely malicious background. They did mean to shed light on how everybody sees different races. However, there were a couple missteps that lead it to being a little bit of an odd take. Mainly, Superman's reaction was so poor that even at the end of the issue, when she says maybe she'll just stay black, look up his reaction. It's a weird one. People back then, and certainly by today's standards, thought it was bad taste to say that you could bring in the entire black experience in just 24 hours. That Lois Lane book, though, has definitely turned a nice little value towards it if you can find it mainly because of the controversial story next up we got to take a turn worse we're going to be talking about whitewash jones now bucky captain america's bucky that is had his own ragtag group called the young allies and one of the dudes in there was whitewash jones the apparently only thing he was good at was de watermelon and could make harmonica talk He's like, when you look at those crazy old cartoons that you're like, how the heck did they did that? It's like that, but maybe even worse how he pronounces ghosties instead of ghost. He's just drawn so ridiculously. But hey, at least he fought Nazis. Next up, let's talk about that time that Marvel very clearly made Falcon a pimp. Yes, that's right. In addition to giving him a very mob background at the times, they also more heavily inferred the fact that he was a pimp. It's also the way they drew it, the dialogue they gave him at the time. It's pretty ridiculous. I feel like back then, and even to some degree now, they just didn't know what they exactly wanted to do with that character, and it kind of shows. Next up, we got to talk about Hal Jordan's decision to name his sidekick, who was an Earth-born native Eskimo, Pie Face. This was something that even in the 60s, I think they recognized that it was maybe a little bit racist because in the show, they actually made it an alien instead of an earthling. Ironically, in that particular portrayal, it still was a little inappropriate how they interacted together. But they did work to lower the undertone of the racism. This is a pretty famous one, and it's a weird choice of a nickname there, Hal. How about we talk about the time that Captain Marvel owned a slave? You had to know that Steamboat was going to be on this list. Yes, Captain Marvel had an actual slave named Steamboat. And almost even worse than Whitewash Jones, this was a character that they made extra stupid, extra fumbling over his words, and annoyingly they just kept doing the same trope where he was completely unaware that Billy Batson was one and the same as Captain Marvel. Meanwhile, he was spending every waking second with Billy Batson. So they really were just driving home this absolutely insane, I would say stereotype, but what was that even based on? I don't know. It was just this ridiculous portrayal that even by 1940s standards, had to have seemed off. Next up, how could we not mention Batman's personal vendetta against Asians? Yeah, there was a weird time period where early on in the Batman storylines, he had it out for Asians, man. He kept calling them Chinamen. He would drop giant statues on unsuspecting Asian people. He would throw them out the window to their death. Yes, this is Batman, like the Batman we're mentioning here. And he was constantly crushing heads and landing on them and kept calling them Chinamen. It crossed a line. It seemed very personal and pretty weird. It's not the Batman we know today, that's for sure. Next up is a personal favorite because this one came up in my research. I didn't know about this one and it's ridiculous, like so many of these are. And it's about the time where Superman went back in time to protect white owned land and screw over some native americans he goes back in time 300 years overthrows an indian chief through manipulation 
becomes the new Indian chief himself and gets them to sell the land over to white men and then goes back in time. Bro, you're not even from Earth. Why are you going back 300 years and screwing over some Native Americans and forcing them to sell land to white people? It's a weird one, to say the least. Next up is Kitty Pride in the 80s. Something about the 1980s and Kitty Pride, man. She was acting like that one friend that delusionally thinks they earned the right to drop the N-word. Nah, man, you don't. And no one told her, I guess, because there's more than a few issues where she just openly and uncensored drops N-bombs, F-bombs, you name it. I saw where the writers were going with this one, but still, it leaves you with a weird taste in your mouth. All right, next up, we gotta talk about the overuse of the term yellow in the 40s. There is not one isolated incident any one of your favorite characters, if they existed during that time period, were referring to Asians in some negative light. Aquaman, Spectre, Human Torch, anybody and everybody, if they were in comic books, has a panel or two or story or multiple comics that they'd probably like to forget about. So why don't I just throw up some of the ones that I was seeing Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, they all were doing it at the time. And you can tell there's definitely an intermingling of some wartime propaganda going on. Some of these panels have actually become quite famous on their own, so maybe you've seen of them. If you think of any, drop it in the comments. Uh, before we give you number one, let's give you a bonus. Let's mention Egg Fu, which was a Wonder Woman 60s villain that attacked people with its giant egg head and mustache. And he said, racist crap. And it was just a ridiculous character, and frankly, there were a lot of weird characters to come out of that time. Let's give number one to Ebony White, and believe it or not, of all people, this is a Will Eisner character. Could it be worse than Whitewash Jones, and could it be worse than Steamboat? It's honestly up there, but this is a particular character that was so famous. This is one of those characters that comic book historians say is personally responsible for setting black culture in comics back so many decades. This is a pretty big whoopsie. Now, what's interesting is Will Eisner defends it pretty strongly, and he says that he never got any criticism or hate mail from actual black communities. I'm not so sure that I buy that defense. It sounds a little bit like BS to me, but this obvious Uncle Tom comparison character still unfortunately lives on, but mostly as a reminder of what the heck were they doing back then. All right, guys, what did I miss? What's your top 10? Or just give me one bonus points if it's a very recent character. I wanna know what whoopsies has editorials made in most recent years and as always, I'll see you at the next video and keep on hunting. Make sure to come down to Sentiment Depot Antiques and Collectibles where I'm set up with all of my comics located at 238 West Delaware Ave, Pennington, New Jersey. Open every day except for Monday and Tuesday. Enjoy 10% off from Wednesday to Friday. See you there.